And when we talk about resharing people's stuff, I'm going to get off on a little tangent here. A long time ago, the biggest pieces of social currency you had were the stuff you created. Okay, the biggest pieces of currency you had were actually the content itself rather than just your name. And back then, we were so, so protective of that being, that's my content. That's my content, okay? And, and that is the older model. Today, with, with content syndication and with content curation, the biggest thing somebody can do for you is not to share your stuff, but to share your stuff and mention your name. Your name getting mentioned is now the biggest piece of social currency. Okay, It is not enough for me to go out to Kay's blog and to read one of Kay's really awesome posts on health and nutrition and for me to share her post and me not to tag her and not to mention her. Okay, If I don't do that, I am not giving her the piece of social currency that she really needs. And so the one structure, the one rule that you're going to find that people are getting really antsy about, the one piece that is kind of etiquette now that we don't talk about but is really becoming more and more, and you're going to see more and more of it in the next year, is always try to identify the author or the creator or the original sharer of anything you share. And sometimes you're going to want to identify who made the original share and who shared it with you. So let me find an example here. And let me just, let me find an example. Okay, so here Eileen Smith has shared with me a post that was originally posted by Damon Nolan. If I click share, it's only going to tell me that it was shared by Damon Nolan. This is what Facebook does too, okay? If something has been reshared by someone and then you share it, it only shows who the original poster was. So what I'd want to do is write a little a little blurb. Okay, that don't don't worry about this. I'm not actually going to share it. And then I'm going to like tab down and I'm going to do thanks for or uh, thanks to Damon, whoops, D-A-M-O-N-D, he may not have sharing, in, or he may not have tagging enabled. Oh, there he is, Damon Nolan, for the share, and Eileen for sharing it with me. Okay, that is a great way to scratch somebody's back. Okay, so what I've done here is not only to share this piece of content, which is content curation. You're going to hear me talk a lot about content curation in the future because this is where the industry is going. But I've added a blurb, so this piece is relevant to my followers. This is good news. This is neat stuff. I Hopefully, hopefully I've read the post. I'm not actually going to click share here. And I have scratched Damon and Eileen's back. Okay? This helps them. But they're going to get notifications that I tag them, and they're going to see that, and they're going to see that I mention them. So what? how do you feel about somebody that gives you a shout-out? What does it do for how you feel about that person, even if you completely don't know them from Adam? There, Kay's got it. Feels darn good. And that's how we want to be associated. So anytime you can connect your face to a good feeling, you're creating this, this bonding of, of you associated with positive emotions. And when you do, you're going to build these networks so much faster. And the same concept applies on Twitter. This is why the Twitter retweet is such a powerful piece of leverage for us, not just for sharing content, not just for the other person, but because that retweet has our ID in it and the original author's ID in it, it comes up in their mention column. And, you know, over here, here I am in Hootsuite. Let me refresh the column real quick. And, you know, here I can see that Robert Dempsey reshared a piece of my stuff. You know, how cool, right? You know, Robert's awesome. And, but there's also people here that I've never met. Like, um, here's Christine. She shared this post, 
I don't believe I'm following her. No, she's she's not got a lot of followers. She's pretty new to Twitter. She shared my stuff. Now I'm going to make a connection with her. I'm going to send a reply. And this is going to let me build this relationship out with her. Because she scratched my back. She's already got me feeling good. Now I'm like, you know, Christine, thank you so much. Okay, so do you see how mentioning someone and tagging someone on any platform is now this social currency? Do you see how it's one of the few things that we have? And the neat thing about it is that if you've built any network at all, as long as you're not like total, total brand new, like, you know, less than a couple hundred, as long as you've got a little bit of foundation on a platform, you have some social currency to share from day one and it doesn't cost you anything. Okay, so this now becomes your greatest piece of leverage because it doesn't cost you anything to scratch these people's backs as long as you're not overdoing it. Okay, if I shared 50 posts to Google Plus in one day, all of these tags don't mean a whole lot. But if I share a handful or two, and sometimes I do share a little too much, but if I share a handful or two, these tags mean a lot. Okay, and so as long as I don't dilute what I'm doing and as long as I keep them important and relevant and, and conscientious, this is something that anyone can get out here and do from day one. And this is where, or, well, almost from day one. You want to do a little initial networking. Build a, a little tight network first before this is really going to help you out. But once you do, you know, most of you guys on the call have some existing social networks. And this is, whether it's on Facebook or Twitter or Google+, Plus, wherever, anytime you can identify the original sharer, it's a lot of leverage for everyone. And this is the currency today.